When we think about acne, we should be thinking about vitamin A, zinc, B5, and mitochondrial function before we think about drugs. That's before we think about retinoids. That's before we think about tetracycline. And here I'll show you why. The following content is not medical advice and is for educational purposes only. Vitamin A has to be converted to retinoic acid. That's activated vitamin A. And that requires zinc and it requires mitochondrial function. And what the retinoic acid does is it suppresses the overproduction of keratin, a protein in the skin that is associated with acne inside the acne lesions or the pimples. It also suppresses inflammatory signaling directly in C. acnes, which is a bacterium that is associated with acne. When mitochondria convert food to ATP, as a byproduct of this, they convert NADH to NAD+, or NAD, and you need NAD to activate vitamin A. If your mitochondria are not good at converting food to energy in the form of ATP, as a byproduct of that, they will not oxidize NADH to NAD. But whenever you activate vitamin A to retinoic acid, you use up the NAD and make NADH. And so you need to constantly oxidize that using mitochondrial function in order to keep vitamin A activated. So what is someone doing when they're applying something like Accutane, isotretinoin, to their face? They're supplying a synthetic version of retinoic acid because they don't have the mitochondrial function to activate their own vitamin A or because they don't eat enough vitamin A or because they're deficient in zinc. And in fact, there's considerable hypothesis that zinc deficiency is a major factor in acne. On the other side of this, another problem you have in acne is that fatty acids build up in the skin and you get too much sebum, which contains fatty acids. That sebum then fuels the growth of C. acnes which feeds primarily on fatty acids. Well, how would you get rid of too many fatty acids in your skin? You would use your mitochondria to convert the fatty acids to ATP and carbon dioxide. You breathe the carbon dioxide out or in the skin, it just evaporates and you don't have an overabundance of fatty acids that are feeding C. acnes growth. You also need ATP to convert vitamin B5 to coenzyme A or CoA, which is needed for that fatty acid oxidation. So if you don't have mitochondrial function, you're not going to have enough fatty acid oxidation in the skin. The fatty acids build up and they feed the growth of the bacteria that drives acne. And what does medicine do with this? Your dermatologist, instead of fixing your mitochondrial function, gives you tetracycline to kill the C. acnes. But the only reason the C. acnes was there to a degree that's promoting acne is because you're mitochondria were not oxidizing the fatty acids. Now, if you take a problem that should have been solved with adequate nutrition and optimal mitochondrial function, then you throw in these synthetic drugs, you wind up with problems. So for example, Accutane is, although it is a form of retinoic acid, it's 13 cis retinoic acid. Most of the retinoic acid that you produce in your body is all transretinoic acid. Only a small amount are forms like 9-cis and 13-cis retinoic acid. So now you take this synthetic retinoid and you overwhelm the supply of retinoic acid to primarily be 13-cis retinoic acid. And that's fine because it, it helps in certain ways by performing some of the actions of activated vitamin A, but it ultimately hurts you because now it interferes with other important actions of vitamin A. We've seen Accutane tied to depression, birth defects, vision impairment, and sexual dysfunction. And in some of those cases, like the vision impairment and the depression, vitamin A actually helps. So this shows that it's actually interfering with natural vitamin A function. And then tetracycline is actually a mitochondrial toxin. In fact, one of the side effects of high-dose tetracycline is that it uh, causes fatty liver disease. And this is actually quite ironic because to the degree that it is poisoning the respiratory chain and backing up the oxidation of fatty acids and therefore 
causing fatty liver in the context of high dose intravenous tetracycline, for example, you put that on your skin and you're killing the C acnes, but now you're also hurting the mitochondria in your skin, preventing the oxidation of their fatty acids, and you might not have a high enough dose to cause fatty liver disease, but you might inhibit the oxidation of fatty acids in the skin enough to keep feeding the C acnes and make you dependent on the tetracycline. So acne starts with good nutrition and mitochondrial function as the cures we should be looking to. And if we skip over those, we actually wind up poisoning the mitochondria even further.